Hi folks, in this video we look at multiple quantifiers and how they interact. The easiest case is when all the quantifiers are of the same type. For example, when I say everybody likes everybody, I just need two universal quantifiers to formalize that. And in that case, it doesn't matter which quantifier goes first. So if I say likes XY, I can put the X quantifier first or I can put the Y quantifier first. Notice that it's essential that I'm preserving the order of XY in my argument places. Because if I switch the order of the X and the Y in the predicate, and I switch the quantifiers, it actually wouldn't be a quantifier reorder equivalence. It would be variable switching. So what that says is, if you keep all the rest of the sentence the same, like R, X, Y, you can put the X first or the Y first, as long as they're of the same type. Now things are different. It's much more complicated if you have mixed quantifiers, because you cannot always reorder the quantifiers however you wish when they're mixed. That's the essential contrast. We use some stronger and weaker terminology to explain this. So pause your videos now and see if you can apply that terminology to this case. Here's three sentences, A, B, and C. I want you to see if you know which one is strongest. So pause your videos now and try to figure this out. Okay, the correct answer is B. This is the stronger one. So this is one of those cases where you are not allowed to reorder them because they're of a different type and they're in relation to each other. What B says is there are two special people, Y and Z, such that everybody sits between them. That's different than saying something like A, where you say for any object in the domain, it sits between two objects. But since I'm first picking the object in the domain for the universal quantifier, it, the, one of them could sit between two objects and a different object in the domain might sit between two different objects. So the order in which you pick these things from left to right matters, especially when the quantifiers are mixed. Let me explain this with a simpler example because uh, the three quantifiers just makes it more complicated. Let me give you the basic example, the canonical example to show how this goes. In order for one thing to be stronger than another, that means something technical in logic. It means that one entails the other and not vice versa. So let's see a simple case about why this sentence with the existential quantifier is stronger. What this says is everybody likes somebody. But when you say that in English, when you have mixed quantifiers in English, like uh, everybody and somebody, a universal and an existential quantifier, there's actually two different readings of it. It's ambiguous. I could mean everybody likes somebody or other, where, every, where people like different things, different people, or it could mean everybody likes somebody special. There's one special person that everybody likes. Now notice, if there's one special person everybody likes, then it is true that everybody likes somebody or other, namely that special person. So the stronger one where there's some special person is where the existential quantifier gets picked first. This says there exists some person such that everybody likes them. And if I'm picking that existential first, then everybody has to, has to bear the liking relation to them. Whereas if I pick the universal first, for one object in my domain, they might like one person, but then for a different object in my domain, I pick who they like, and this could vary from one person to another. So just because everybody likes somebody or other does not mean that there's some unique person that everybody likes. Now, the English is ambiguous. If I just say everybody likes somebody, usually we use context or we use inflection to, to, and emphasis in order to clarify what we mean. But just literally speaking, everybody likes somebody has two different readings. This, and that's not unique to that silly example. Anytime you have mixed quantifiers in English, there's going to be a potential ambiguity. Like if I say every day a student at UW oversleeps, that could mean like every day some student or other oversleeps. Or it could mean every day some student oversleeps. Let's buy them an alarm clock. They have a serious problem. You know, there's, I mean, it's sort of a stupid logic joke, but you can always say this, like some student missed every class. That could mean uh, some student or other missed every class. We never had perfect attendance. Or it could mean some student missed every single class. They, they should have dropped. They're just wasting their money. Uh, so you can, always, you can always disambiguate this in multiple ways in English. And, and oftentimes when we say these things in English, it's obvious which one we mean. Um, but in FOL, you'll never have that ambiguity. You have to decide which of these two ways you're going to translate it. And there's, because there's no ambiguity in first order logic, we'll always have to figure out which one we mean. So sometimes we're just going to ask you to recognize this kind of equivalence uh, and this kind of ambiguity and give us both translations because the English doesn't specify. Now, so what, what we've been talking about is the fact that when you have mixed quantifiers, you cannot necessarily reorder them. There's one exception to this rule, though, so this is important to also understand. The reason why everybody likes somebody cannot be reordered is because the X and the Y are in a relation to each other. But in this case, like, think about if I say something's a cat and everything's a mammal. This X and this Y, there's no 
um, binary predicate. There's no relation putting X and Y in connection to each other. And that means that if I use null quantification, I could do this in order to pull the X out first, and then the Y would slide in after it, or I could have pulled the Y out first and put the X in after it. So if these are not related in any way, then the order in which I do null quantification allows me to show that the quantifiers can be reordered. But notice, I could not do this if these were in relation to each other, because, uh, because then one of these quantifiers would already have to be wider over the other one, or else there would be a free variable. So you can really only get this issue with null quantification if there's no connection between the X and the Y, and that allows you to reorder quantifiers no matter what type they are, even if they're mixed. So, so let's go back to those cases of English. You might be thinking, now wait a minute. In English, why do we always have this ambiguity that I said? Well, what I actually mean is you always have this ambiguity if the two quantifiers, if the mixed quantifiers in English have a relation to each other. Like every day, some student at UW oversleeps, and implicit in this is they're oversleeping on that day. So there actually is a relation. Whenever you can sort of make a silly logic joke and, and point out this ambiguity, you're always gonna be able to find a way in which those things are related to each other. And if there truly is no relation between them, then the ambiguity won't arise. So let me just give you the final um, version of all these equivalence principles so you have it in one place. So remember, we've been talking about null quantification and how if this universal quantifier doesn't bind anything in P, then I can put a wide scope on there. And the same with the existential quantifiers. These null quantification principles work great with the Boolean connectives. However, uh, uh, they don't work well on the um, arrows because um, notice when the universal quantifier is an antecedent of this arrow, there's like a hidden negation symbol out here and you cannot pull it out. If you're savvy enough, you can know that the, that the quantifier in the consequent actually is okay because there's no hidden negation there. And these null quantification principles, as I've been saying, bear a really important relationship to the quantifier reorder equivalences. So, what, and they have to do with this exception. Generally, you cannot reorder them if there's a relation it, between them. But of course, look at this one down here. If the X and the Y are not related in any way, then you can reorder them and it's gonna be totally fine. Okay, thanks.